An engineer measures to the nearest centimeter the length of metal rod. So it suggests a suitable model. So to the nearest and when you have this it's an interval sum and to the nearest usually means minus 0.5 and 0.5 so that's the interval. So it suggests a suitable interval that's going to be uniform continuous distribution and the interval is going to be minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 because when we take something to the nearest whole number it's usually uh, minus 0.5 to 0.5 so question number B you have to find the probability for within 0.2 centimeter so probability of within 0.2 centimeter could be minus 0.2 to 0.2 so for finding this probability you have to use a sketch it's a good idea to use a sketch so minus 0.5 to 0.5 xfx so this this within point 0.2 means from here it is minus point 0.2 and this is point 0.2 so it's going to be this region and this is going to be 1 by b minus a 0.5 minus minus 0.5 is 1 so the probability is going to be equals to area of this rectangle length is from 0 to point 0.2 0 to point 0.2 point 0.4 into 1 so the probability is point 0.4 question number c two rods are chosen. So we have this information. This is two and both of it. That means also two. And it would be within 0.2 centimeter. So within 0.2 centimeter means that's the probability of success which is 0.4 from the previous sum. Within within 0.2 centimeter means 0.4. This is two. So this is two. And this is x equals to two. So that is we have to find both. So this is uh, we can use the binomial uh, distribution so y we use the y term because we've already used the x so n equals to 2 t equals to 0.4 and we have to find probability of y equals to 2 so that would be 2c2 1 minus 0 0.4 to the power 0 0.4 to the power 2 so this is basically 0 0.4 uh, to the power 2 which is going to be 0.16 of course, this sum can also be done in the logic of uh, AND logic. Uh, we are taking two rods. One of it is within 0.2 cm AND another of it is also within 0.2 cm. So 0.4 into 0.4. That can also be done. Question number four is a CDF sum. So general continuous distribution. So the first one is find the probability. Remember, when you want to find the probability, less than A means FA. So we have to make this less than. So question number A is going to be probability of x is greater than 0.7 equals to 1 minus probability of x is less than 0.7 which is 1 minus f.7 which is the CDF. So 1 minus, let's put it in this expression, it would be 1 by 3, 0.7 squared, 4 minus 0.7 squared. Let's start with the innermost bracket. It's a good idea. So 4 minus 0.7 whole squared. That makes it 3.51 multiplied by. So multiplied by 0.7 whole squared is uh, 0.49. So 0.49 by 3. So that makes it 0.5733. So 1 minus that is 0 0.4267 0 0.4267 question number B we have to find the PDF remember for finding the PDF it is derivative of the CDF so derivative of the CDF is the PDF so PDF since PDF is the instance of the probability this is cumulative we find the derivative of the CDF as the PDF so this is going to be PDF equals to d by dx of the expression here so 1 by 3 x squared 4 minus x squared now remember uh, for basic derivative it cannot be in the multiplied form it has to be in the simplest form and uh, we have to use the uh, addition rule to do that because in order for this to work it, it can be in this format for example d by dx of u plus b we can write it as d by dx of u 
plus d by dx of v. And same with minus. If this was minus, we could write here minus. But when things are multiplied together, uh, we have to use some other rules. So it's a good idea to simplify it first. So this is going to be d by dx of so 1 by 3 x into x squared into 4 is perfect squared x to the power 2 into x squared is x to the power 4 so this is it so let's differentiate this this is 1 by 3 is a constant so I'll keep the constant here so 4x squared is going to 4 to the 8x x to the power 4 is 4x cubed so that's it that is the CDA but always remember you have to define the PDF but defining the PDF this is the rule. You write the PDF, you write some sort of an expression, you give the limit, you give the limit and you write zero otherwise. That's it. So that's how you define it. You write zero otherwise and this is how you define it. So in order to define this, we write PDF equals to 1 by 3, 8x minus 4x cubed and uh, limit is from 0 to 1 limit is from 0 to 1 the limit of PDF and CDF is the same so 0 otherwise that's it of course I could take the 4 outside and make it uh, 2x minus x cube but this is also fine the next question is calculate the expected value okay question number C Calculate the expected value. So expected value is limit 0 to 1. Then that limit x fx. X fx dx. So we just found the PDF. So x fx this is going to be 1 by 3, 8x minus 4x cubed dx. So let's simplify this. So as it is with differentiation, uh, it's the same with integration. We have to multiply this and simplify. If you multiply this, it would be, uh, let me take this 4 common outside, it would be easier for us. So 4 by 3, and let's multiply with x. This would be 2x squared minus x to the power 4 dx. So that's, that's the expression that we have. So this is, this is what we have to do. This would be, if I take the 4 by 3 outside the integration sign, 2x squared is going to be 2x cubed by 3 x to the power 4 is going to be x to the power 5 by 5 and the limit is going to be 0 to 1. So this would be 4 by 3. If I put 1 here, it would be 2 by 3, 1 cubed minus 1 to the power 5, which is also 1 by 5 minus 0. So this, if you put 0, it would be 0. So this would be 4 by 3. Be careful with the bracket. It should be bracket of the, this should be open bracket, this should be the closed bracket because 4 by 3 is multiplied with it. So this is going to be 2 by 3 minus 1 by 5. So the calculator, so 2 by 3 minus 1 by 5, that is 7 by 15, uh, we can simplify this, so we can multiply this with 4 by 3, so 4 by 3, and the answer is 28 by 45, so 28 by 45 is the expected value. Next question. We have to calculate the variance also. Okay, so let's calculate the variance. Now, it's the same question, so let me continue it here. So the formula for variance is variance equals to ex squared minus mean squared. I'm using the symbol mu for expected value because ex and ex squared can be confusing. So this would be the same rule, so over the entire limit, but this time we write x squared into fx and minus mu squared. Mu is 28 by 45 whole squared. So let's do this calculation, 0 to 1 x squared into the expression that we used is, uh, it's here, this is, this is the fx. So this is, let me take the 4 common and write fx. So this would be 4 by 3. Uh, 2x minus x cubed dx and we have this 28 by 45 whole squared. Okay, so let's simplify. So we have, let me keep the 4 by 3 outside. So this would be 2x cubed minus x to the power 5 dx minus 28 by 45 whole squared. So that would be 4 by 3 
2 x to the power 4 by 4 minus x to the power 6 by 6 and the limit is 0 to 1 and this is 28 by 45 whole square. So this would be 4 by 3 if I put 1 here. So 2 to the 4, so 1 by 2, 1 to the power 4 is 1 and 1 to the power 6 is 6 minus 0. So it would be this. this. So minus 28 by 45 whole squared. So 4 by 3, if we calculate this is half minus 1 by 6. So half minus 1 by 6 is half minus 1 by 6. This is 1 by 3 minus 28 by 45 whole squared. Let me calculate it together. So this is so 4 by 9, this is going to be 4 by 9 minus 28 by 45 whole square. So this is 0 0.057. So what? 0 0.057. 0 0.057. 28 to be more accurate. 0 0.057. 728. Okay, so what did we have to show? It has to be 0 0.057. So let's write. So equals to 0 0.057. So it is correct. Finally, uh, one measure of skewness. Skewness is whether the data is symmetric or not. So skewness is this mean. So we have found the mean. So the mean is we found it 28 by 45. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. This is going to be square root of 0 0.057. Now, in order to find this value for skewness, we need to find the mode. So let's find the mode. So, mode, mode is, or mode. Since mode is the data with the highest probability, so we have to, uh, for the turning point, we have to find the mode from the turning point. So this is, uh, this is the turning point. So f prime x is going to give us the turning point. So this is 1 by 3 is constant. So this would be 8 minus, this would be both 3 is a 12. So 12 x squared equals to 0. So that makes it 1 by 3 divided by 0 divided by 1 by 3 is 0. So 8 minus 12 x squared equals to 0. So that makes it uh, 8 by 12 equals to x squared. Uh, 4 to the 8, uh, 4 to the 12. Therefore, x equals to plus minus square root of 2 by 3, which gives us square root of 2 by 3. No, this is the calculator thing is square root of 2 divided by 3. So let me write the square root of 2 by 3 is going to be 0 0.816. 1, Since the limit is from 0 to 1, uh, negative cannot be the mode. So mode is 0 0.816. Hence, skewness. So skewness equals to mean they have given the formula themselves. So mean minus mode. So mean is 28 by 45 minus mode is 0 0.816 divided by variance. Variance is 0 0.057. This is square root. Standard deviation square root of the variance. 0 0.057. Uh, so that should be the answer. So the skewness is 28 by 45 minus 0 0.816, 0 0.816 equals to this divided by square root of 0 0.05, 0 0.057 equals to minus 0 0.812, minus 0 0.812.